The UK has announced the formal extension of the grace period for goods moving between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Michael Gove announced last week the government's intent to do so last week in a move which sparked fury in the EU. In order to ease trade, the amnesty on some goods will now be extended until October. Earlier this evening, the Prime Minister had claimed the extension on goods was right and sensible, despite the EU's claims. Ministers have also launched talks on a global trade agreement in services that could boost the UK economy by billions every year. UK ministers and business groups held initial discussions with the World Trade Organization and internally. An agreement would allow the UK to export services such as banking, insurance and legal advice. Under proposals considered by Whitehall officials, these services would be exported to fast-growing economies across the world in Africa and Asia. It comes just weeks ahead of a deadline with the EU to strike an agreement on financial services, which would allow the city to freely sell across the channel. However, Brussels has refused to grant equivalence to the UK in the Memorandum of Understanding talks. Express company UK understands the EU talks have stalled with officials more confident on striking a WTO agreement fearing discussions with Brussels could collapse. One official added to this publication, it will be the ultimate Brexit boom. They stressed any potential deal would make London one of the biggest financial capitals of the world. Conservative MP Mel Stride, chairman of the Treasury Select Committee, said, Where I sense we are moving is to look more to multilateral and international arrangements. Basically to be more outward-facing, rather than in the EU's orbit. The latest figures from the ONS reveal UK exports of services rose by 14. 3% in 2018 to 185.3 billion pounds. Meanwhile, imports of services increased by 17. 0% to 92.1 pounds billion point zero six colon zero zero M update, Brexit Britain to power 1 million homes on green energy and export it worldwide. Brexit Britain will be handed a boost by Cornwall, which is set to launch a project capable of powering almost 1 million homes on renewable energy, in a technological breakthrough which could be exported worldwide, Express. CO.UK can reveal. Prime Minister Boris Johnson previously outlined his blueprint to spearhead a green industrial revolution creating 250,000 jobs in clean energy, transport, nature, and innovative technologies to allow the UK to reach the legally binding net zero target by 2050. Number one on the list of his 10-point plan for Brexit Britain to flourish was offshore wind, in particular, producing enough offshore wind to power every home, and quadrupling how much we currently produce. Mr Johnson has turned to the UK's industrial heartlands to do so, including Cornwall, whose local council declared a climate emergency in 2019 and has since moved to generate around 37% of its electricity from renewable sources. 5.10 AM update, Brexit Britain, filled with opportunities for farming and fishing expansion says Redwood. John Redwood insisted Brexit Britain could completely revamp and expand on fishing and farming across the country. 
Tory MP John Redwood insisted the UK could now break through from the EU with a successful Brexit. During an interview with Express, CO.UK, Mr. Redwood noted the opportunities Brexit has created for a mass expansion of the fishing and farming industry. He argued, without the EU influence, the UK could better guide these industries to improve them for the benefit of the British people. Mr. Redwood said, I think Brexit Britain is full of opportunity for the independent United Kingdom. 4 AM Update, Brexit Theory, German companies hit very hard by supply delays. Brexit has seen German companies hit very hard by supply delays as UK-EU trade endures chaos after Britain split from the bloc. The Brexit trade deal, implemented on January 1, has not ended the tensions between the UK and the EU over exports and imports. As both parties continue to adjust to the new relationship, the economic impact is being felt in Germany. Joachim Lang of the BDI, the main association of German industry, said in February that supply chain problems are hitting German companies very hard. He added that this, along with difficulties surrounding COVID-19, will result in a massive stress test for commercial ties between the UK and Europe. 3.20 AM Update, Shameful Boris breaks silence on EU vaccine ban and urges bloc to stand by commitments. Boris Johnson has intervened in an escalating route over the EU's bloc on vaccine exports to Australia. Downing Street has warned Brussels to abide by its commitments to send jabs manufactured on the continent to the rest of the world as it warned export bans risked endangering the recovery from the pandemic. Yesterday Italy announced it had blocked the shipment of 250,000 AstraZeneca jabs to Australia. The decision was made after approval from the European Commission. 2.20 AM Update, Guy Verhofstadt can't resist one final swipe as Brexit rival Farage quits politics. Guy Vestad has aimed one final bar at old sparring partner Nigel Farage, with the MEP taking to social media to crow after the former Brexit party leader's announcement that he was quitting politics for good. Mr Farage confirmed his decision yesterday on Twitter, as well as in a message to supporters of his political outfit, now rebranded as the Reform Party. However, he was given short shrift by Mr. Verhofstadt, a frequent critic of both Brexit and Mr. Farage personally. EU taxpayers certainly won't miss his work ethic either. 1.30 AM Update, Dutch PM demanded Eurozone exit clause in huge blow to EU, you can never leave. The European Union risked backlash from one of its prominent members after Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte demanded there be an exit clause from the Eurozone. The Netherlands is preparing for an election this month after Mr Rutte's government resigned in January over a childcare scandal. More than 20,000 families were wrongly accused of fraud by the tax authority in the Netherlands. Yet Mr. Rott is still expected to remain in power. The errors had begun under a previous government, and Mr. Rutt's polling hasn't suffered in the aftermath of the resignation.
Polls suggest his party is likely to again finish as the country's largest and with more seats than it won in the previous 2017 election. Debates surrounding the EU are unlikely to play a prominent role in the vote as the coronavirus crisis takes center stage. 12 AM Update Britain's furious as EU move to block vaccine shipments to Australia backfires. Businesses have threatened to quit the European Union as the bloc's move to block vaccine shipments to Australia backfires and threatens to scare off investors. And Britons have lashed out at the bloc, claiming it is not a smart move. The bloc came under fire last week after backing Italy's move to block shipments of the AstraZeneca vaccine, which was developed with Oxford University, to Australia. The move was widely criticized with politicians saying the bloc are tearing up the rulebook. Ross Clark, columnist for The Spectator and Telegraph, told Takar Adiano how the latest move could backfire badly on the EU and could even lead to an exodus of investors and businesses. Now, express.co.uk readers have hit back at the bloc claiming Brussels didn't want the AstraZeneca vaccine at first but now don't want anyone else to have any. Oliver Trapnell takes over from Bill McLaughlin. 10.51 p.m. update, Commonwealth Brexit Bonanza, UK eyes three pounds. 2BN Caribbean trade links with 14 nations. Brexit Britain is set to boost trade with its Commonwealth allies in the Caribbean and build on lucrative agreements worth billions of pounds. Ministers at the Department of International Trade are looking to strengthen trade ties with the Caribbean community, Cariforum, countries. Cariforum countries include Jamaica, Barbados, Belize, and Trinidad, and Tobago, with total UK trade worth £3. Two billion last year. UK Caribbean Trade Envoy Darren Henry pledged a significant increase in trade activity in the coming months. In the latest move for the UK, which is aiming to boost trade relations across the world after leaving the EU, the Conservative MP for Broxtow added, I'm focused on developing greater trading opportunities between the UK and the Caribbean and see trade as a key pillar to delivering mutual prosperity. There are opportunities to grow this across a number of sectors. Point 9.56 point PM update, Nicola Sturgeon's unearthed comments risk putting Scotland's EU place in danger. Nicola Sturgeon could leave Scotland's EU place in danger as the Scottish First Minister resists joining the Eurozone. Support for Scottish independence has taken a slight hit after months of momentum. A Savanta Comres poll found 46% of the 1,015 Scots polled were in favour of remaining part of the UK, while 43% supported independence and 10% were undecided. With undecided voters excluded, 52% to 48% of Scots indicated that they were in favour of the Union. Numerous polls in the last year had suggested a referendum would produce a yes vote, but the Alex Salmond row appears to have had an impact on public opinion north of the border. 8.33 p.m. update Rejoiner Lord Adonis appointed chair of European Movement founded by Sir Winston Churchill. The European Movement has elected Rejoiner Lord Andrew Adonis as its new chair. 
The former Labour cabinet minister will lead the movement that is fighting for the UK's relationship with Europe. Paul Lomas, chair of the nominations committee, said, The European movement is delighted that Andrew has been elected as the next chair. He added, Andrew has exceptional experience, skills, and public recognition. 7.46 p.m. Update, UK announces move to extend amnesty on goods. The UK government has announced the formal move to extend the amnesty on goods moving between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. This means some goods moving between the two will not have all customs checks applied until the end of October. Point six point fifty four PM update Frost playing games over Brexit, ex Mandarin breaks cover to claim UK burning trust. David Frost is playing games over Brexit, a former top official to the UK's EU exit team has warned Boris Johnson. Former permanent secretary to the department for exiting the EU Philip Rycroft claimed Lord Frost is not accepting responsibility over Brexit. Speaking today, he urged Lord Frost and the Prime Minister to stop playing hardball with the EU and resolve issues surrounding trade in Northern Ireland. Following the decision to unilaterally extend the grace period for goods moving between Northern Ireland and Great Britain, Mr. Rycroft warned trust is now being burned with the EU. He told the Westminster Hour, extending those grace periods is not an unreasonable thing to ask for. But the way that David Frost has gone about this suggests that they're still playing games around Brexit. It's all about the politically attractive ploy of playing hardball with the EU, rather than accepting their responsibilities for the deal that he and the Prime Minister negotiated.